Howdy gamers, I know what you're thinking, Eric, where's the comparison between the Metal Gear Solid 2 instruction manual and a newborn baby, and long story short, I lost the baby, my uncle died, but I do have a copy of Punch-Out for the NES, so overall, I'd say today's been pretty good. Punch-Out on the NES came out September 18th, 1987, but you're probably saying to yourself, whoa there, am I seeing double and no. Also, stop talking on that to a YouTube video, you look stupid. The reason there's two of them is because originally Punch-Out was released as Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, but that's not the version I played. Because number one, Mike Tyson is pretty intimidating, so I'm not too sure if I could beat him in a fight. And number two, he's a legally registered sex offender, so I'm not too sure if I'm allowed to get within 100 feet of him to fight him, which is why we'll just be sticking with the normal Punch-Out for now. Also, I guess if I had to make up a third reason, it would probably be that this is part of a series where I go over the top 125 games of all time, and Punch-Out was number 118, but that doesn't really matter. But I should probably actually talk about the game now, and to be honest, I have really mixed feelings about it. The game is a lot of fun sometimes, and it definitely is one of the better NES games overall, but it still is an NES game and definitely feels like one. First off, my biggest problem with Punch-Out and with most NES games is that there aren't any quick time events. It completely breaks my immersion when NES games don't have button prompts that come up on the screen telling me to press a single button to do something. But my second biggest problem with Punch-Out and with most NES games would have to be when they send you back a few levels or all the way back to the beginning of a game just because you got a game over. In Punch-Out, if you get a game over, the game only sends you back to the start of the circuit, which at most will be four fighters, but the problem is that you only get one try at each fighter before you have to restart. You don't get multiple lives or continues, which really stinks. It's not one hit and you're dead, you do have a health bar, although some attacks will one shot or combo you. If you do end up getting knocked down, you have to button mash to get back up, which I like. It's really intense and is a nice way to make getting knocked down and trying to get back up into a gameplay mechanic and they pulled it off well. But if you get knocked down three times in one round, that's a TKO and you lose no matter what. But the problem is, late game, a lot of the time you can only be knocked down three times max spread throughout those three rounds before you get KO'd. And since when you get back up, most of the time you don't have full health, I wouldn't really consider this getting multiple tries at a fight. Even games like Contra had multiple lives on top of a few continues, but here it's just one game over and you're done. And believe me, I love the Punch-Out lore just as much as the next guy, I, it's extremely intricate and deep, I know. And lore-wise, I get that it wouldn't make sense for Little Mac to have unlimited tries to beat a fighter, but the fact is that some of the attacks that are thrown at you are completely unfair for the first time going through. And because of this, it would at least be nice if the game gave you two attempts at every fight before being sent back to the beginning of the circuit. There could be the first fight and then maybe a rematch. Of course, the game sending you back to the beginning of the circuit each time you lose wouldn't be as much of a problem if some of the fights weren't straight up unfair. This is mainly prominent in the last circuit in the final fight against Mr. Dream where all the fighters except for Honda Civic are straight up unfair which makes what should have only been one third of the game into five sixths of the game. Some of the patterns and ways you beat people in the last circuit are just straight up unfair. Take vodka drunken I mean soda popinski for example. Guess how you're supposed to beat him. Just kidding, I don't have time for you to guess. My uncle's funeral was in two minutes and you wouldn't have guessed it right anyways. In order to beat him, you're supposed to dodge his first two punches and then stay crouching when he goes down and then after a second, punch him in the face to get a start and then use it on him to get an uppercut. Repeat that a second time and then get in a few more punches for the third knockdown for a TKO. That's just not realistic to ask of a player and yes I do get that there are other ways to beat him but that is the main way. Otherwise you're going to be adding an extra few hours onto the massive playtime that it takes to beat this game. Or who knows, maybe I'm just bad at video games but what I do know is that a lot of the attacks in this game are well telegraphed with the exception of some of Don Flamenco's punches. I would say that pretty much every attack in this game has a warning that comes before it, but the problem is when the game doesn't give you enough time to properly react to those warnings. Take for example Bald Bull, it's obvious when he's going to charge at you, but if you want to punch him here, you literally only have a 4 frame window to do so. That's just not okay, but I get that that's optional, that doesn't count, you don't have to punch him there, and you're right, you also don't have to pay your taxes. But the thing is, it's a lot easier if you do. And even if that's not required, take Macho Man for example. He'll do this little twitch, and although I can't tell you how frame perfect it is because I didn't see a YouTube comment telling me, 
I can tell you that it isn't a lot of time at all to react. And the thing is, I'm all for hard boss fights in video games. One of my favorite games of all time is Super Mario 3D World. But the problem here is the frame perfect reactions mixed with the fact that if you get knocked down twice, you have to restart the entire circuit. Honestly, hard bosses and no respawn points are like Boogie for the DS and Virginity. They just don't go together. It might not sound bad having to restart back from only a few levels, but to put it all into perspective, on the final boss fight against Mr. Dream, it took me 49 tries to beat him. That means for all those 49 times I fought Mr. Dream, I also had to fight Super Macho Man 49 times, and on average it takes 4 minutes for me to beat him. That means I literally spent over 3 hours fighting someone that I've already beaten, just so I could fight someone that I would get instantly TKO'd by. That's 3 hours I could've spent playing the first level of Contra 180 times, or actually doing my World History Summer project that I haven't started on that's due in a few days, and I should honestly really kinda do that. Once again though, not all the bosses are bad, there's just a huge difficulty spike in the third circuit that kind of messes things up. But enough negativity, because like I said, my feelings towards this game were mixed, and there were some things I liked. I liked the pixel art, honestly, it's amazing here, the same thing goes with the soundtrack. The main fighting theme is so underrated, and I love how each fighter has their own short little intro song. Also, the controls feel really responsive, and like I've said, most of the fighters are a lot of fun to fight. I also really enjoyed how the game is more than just punching and dodging. There are the hearts, which if they get depleted, you become weak and you move slower and can no longer punch. You lose hearts if you get hit or if your punch gets blocked, which discourages mindless punching. I guess it also discourages getting punched, but I feel like dying also kind of did that. Anyways, in addition to the heart meter, there's also the amount of stars you have, which you get for landing difficult punches on your opponents, and they do a lot of damage, and depending on the fighter, can even one-shot. Also, I think it was a creative idea to have Doc Lewis giving you tips in between rounds on the fighter's weaknesses. Of course, that's really only for the first two circuits, because in the third he's too busy advertising you the Nintendo Fun Club, but it was cool while it lasted. Overall, like I said, I'm pretty mixed with my feelings towards this game. I do think it is one of the better NES games out there, and if you do enjoy NES games or just hard games in general, I do recommend you give this game a try. But at the same time, if it wasn't for the fact that I had to, I definitely don't think I would have beaten this game. And that's why to give this game a score of 100, I would give it a 75 out of 100. The first two circuits for this game were just so much fun, but the final circuit and the boss fight against Mr. Dream just dragged on from way too long. Maybe if there had been continues or just multiple tries at the fighters, I would have enjoyed the game more. With that said, this is a game that I could see myself coming back to, cause I have all the patterns down and the muscle memory of beating all the fighters, so who knows, maybe it could be fun to come back to every now and then. With that said though, this is a review, so I do have to give this game an award, and I give it the Best Boxing Game Award. Haven't played any other boxing games. I would play another boxing game, but I have to get going. My uncle's funeral was in... Frick. It started a minute ago. I don't think I have to worry though, because this is like his third one this year, and I've been to all the other ones, so I think he'll understand. Plus, I can just always go to his next one. Plus, now that my afternoon is free, I can go ahead and go try out Super Punch-Out. So I guess I'm gonna go do that, and until next time, stay safe, and I love you guys.